I've been working as the lead coordinator for the Iran uh, uh, implementation of the Iran nuclear deal uh, since uh, September, and in that process, I've been working at coordinating all of the uh, activities of the U.S. government, both in the State Department, but also in other agencies as well, uh, to make sure uh, that the deal is fully implemented according to the very complicated terms that we negotiated. Uh, we reached a really important milestone in the deal last uh, Saturday in uh, Vienna, almost exactly six months after uh, the Joint Comprehensive uh, Program of Action was uh, agreed back in July last year, and uh, so-called Implementation Day. And Implementation Day is uh, the day uh, by which um, Iran has uh, kept all of its commitments. It had a number of commitments that it had, had to uh, carry out uh, before reaching Implementation Day, but basically uh, introduced uh, new limits and controls on its, uh, its nuclear program. So the whole first part of the deal was getting to that uh, day, uh, and then Implementation Day is an important milestone because once the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, certified that Iran had met all of these steps, uh, then part two of the agreement comes in, uh, which is that uh, the United States and the European Union, as well as the United Nations Security Council, agreed to lift uh, a number of sanctions that had been on Iran because of concerns about its nuclear program uh, over uh, the years. So all of this happened all, all at once. On, on Saturday, uh, we had uh, the uh, IAEA announce that it had found Iran in full compliance, and then instantly uh, we had to go through and uh, have the President and Secretary of State uh, sign uh, the lifting of sanctions and certain provisions of uh, a new UN Security Council Resolution 2231 uh, went into effect, and the European Union did the uh, uh, the same thing. So it was a very, it was a pretty momentous day uh, in terms of the agreement. Uh, I think um, uh, all of us were really pleased with uh, uh, with how uh, it went. Uh, the motive for uh, the U.S. going into this whole process and the negotiations were going on for more than uh, more than two years before we actually had uh, the agreement last July. But our, our motive was to um, work with Iran uh, so that concerns that the international community had had about the nuclear program uh, going back 10 years and more, uh, that all of those concerns were addressed. Uh, principally, the concerns were that because of past um, concealed activities with the program, uh, that there was a concern that Iran might have a military objective. Iran all along uh, assured that it did not have, but, but there was a lot of <laughs> disagreement, and of course the international community through a number of Security Council resolutions, IAEA uh, EA resolutions, had uh, uh, set in place these sanctions. So uh, the main elements that uh, of the deal that Iran uh, complied with as of last Saturday uh, were, were pretty significant. I mean, there were dozens of steps that Iran took. I'll summarize uh, the most uh, important uh, of them. Uh, first of all, although all the parties to the agreement one of the main elements of the agreement was an agreement that Iran could have a nuclear enrichment uh, program uh, subject to verification <clears throat> and monitoring by the IAEA. And so in exchange for that, uh, uh, that, that agreement from, from the, the United States and the Permanent Members of the Security Council in Germany and, uh, and the European Union, uh, Iran um, agreed to limit its enrichment activities. Uh, before, prior to implementation day, they had about 19,000 centrifuges that were enriching uh, uranium. As of implementation day, that number had dropped to 5,060 centrifuges, so a more than two-thirds reduction in operating centrifuges. Um, it reduced the amount of nuclear, of enriched nuclear material that it had on hand uh, from about 12,000 kilograms of enriched nuclear material down to 300. And they agreed that for the life of the agreement, uh, through year 15, they will keep a stockpile of enriched nuclear material below uh, 300 kilograms uh, the, the entire time. And that material that they have cannot be enriched to a greater level than 3.67%. Uh, uh, so that was a 98% uh, reduction in the holdings of Iran's uh, enriched uh, nuclear material. Uh, additionally, Iran uh, 
was building a uh, heavy water reactor that was capable of producing weapons grade plutonium, another potential uh, pathway towards developing a nuclear weapon. And Iran agreed uh, that it would uh, remove the core of that reactor, is the Arak reactor, A-R-A-K, and fill it with concrete so that it could not be used to produce weapons grade plutonium. And uh, in its stead, we'll be working um, with a, a subgroup of the uh, P5 plus one, uh, the firm of five members of the Security Council plus Germany who negotiated the deal uh, to modernize the reactor in a way that will uh, almost eliminate uh, the ability to produce weapons grade uh, plutonium. Uh, in addition, um, Iran agreed to invite uh, really an unprecedented uh, number of uh, inspectors and monitoring mechanisms uh, on its territory so from the IAEA so that the IAEA could monitor that Iran's program is fully peaceful uh, going forward. And the IAEA will be identifying between 130 to 150 uh, inspectors who will be responsible for regularly visiting Iran, working in Iran, uh, to verify that Iran is in remains in compliance. Additionally, Iran agreed, uh, as of implementation day, to implement the additional protocol, which is an extra series of, of rules and procedures by which the IAEA can get access not only to declared facilities in Iran, but any place in Iran where it believes nuclear activity might be going on. So this will give the IAEA the ability to follow up if there's a report that there's a covert uh, nuclear operation somewhere, uh, that inspectors will be able to follow certain procedures to go there uh, and, uh, and inspect. The IAEA also put in place um, really uh, monitoring and, and, and verification and, and checks at every step along the way in the nuclear uh, fuel cycle within Iran. So the uh, uranium mines will be uh, monitored, uh, the, the factories that produce centrifuges will be monitored, uh, the uh, actual enrichment uh, sites uh, at Natanz, uh, at their enrichment fuel site, uh, fuel enrichment site will be monitored. So, so there will be very uh, it would be very difficult to divert nuclear material to a covert program without the IAEA uh, being uh, aware of it. And then uh, finally, uh, the uh, Iran uh, has agreed uh, in the framework of the Security Council to procure all of its materials for uh, its nuclear program on the international market through a very carefully monitored uh, procurement channel so that any material that Iran tries to buy or needs to buy for its nuclear program has to get the approval of a, uh, of a subcommittee of the P5 plus one plus Iran that will work with the Security Council uh, in approving every single sale of this, uh, of this material. So uh, through all of these measures, we've effectively guaranteed, uh, before implementation day a few months ago, uh, if despite its public uh, announcements that it did not want to build a nuclear weapon. If Iran had decided today we're going to build a nuclear weapon a few months ago, they could have done so with its existing uh, capabilities uh, within about uh, two months. Now, as a so-called breakout time, now as a result of these measures uh, and the departure from Iran of all of this enriched material, the, the significant reduction in its enrichment capacity, if Iran decided today to build a nuclear weapon, uh, it would take at least one year to do so. So there's been a more than six-fold increase uh, in the amount of time, uh, which gives some uh, assurance uh, to Iran's neighbors and others in the world community uh, that the threat of, of a nuclear Iran is not as serious as they may have considered it at, uh, at one point. So I mentioned we lifted sanctions, uh, a certain number of sanctions, together with our European partners and the United Nations, effective on implementation day, and we did so on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, effectively, we've uh, removed, uh, some years ago, the United States had there's a lot of sanctions on Iran for lots of reasons because of uh, our uh, 
various disagreements and differences that we've had with Iran and human rights and terrorism and regional uh, stability over the years. But we've lifted those sanctions that were imposed for nuclear reasons that put sanctions on third countries who did business or banking uh, with Iran. So foreign businesses or governments um, had a choice. If they did business with Iran, they would not be able to get access to the U.S. financial system. Um, and, uh, and, and so it was an additional source of pressure. So all of those sanctions have been lifted. So now uh, foreign governments, foreign banks uh, can do business with Iran without any risk to their businesses in the United States. Uh, we've also removed uh, uh, similar sanctions on insurance companies who would, could not insure activities in Iran without uh, risking contacts with the United States. In energy, uh, foreign entities, uh, countries are now free to buy Iranian petroleum products without any penalty uh, with, uh, to their business in, in the United States and a number of other uh, uh, sectors. Uh, so that will significantly allow a significant expansion of, uh, of trade uh, with Iran by other countries. Additionally, the United States on Saturday removed uh, sanctions on individual Iranian entities and people who were under sanction because of their involvement in Iran's nuclear program. And so 400 uh, of those entities were unsanctioned on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, additionally, the United States, although American, Americans, American businesses are broadly prohibited from doing business with Iran for other reasons, uh, the United States government decided as part of this agreement to let foreign-owned subsidiaries of American companies who may be owned by American companies but operate overseas, uh, they will now be allowed to do business uh, in Iran. And those, uh, uh, the, the, a license to allow that was uh, released on Saturday by our Treasury Department. Additionally, uh, the United States has agreed. We used to have uh, a lot of some trade from Iran, some, some imports from Iran, carpets and foodstuffs, pistachios, caviar, and so forth. That was uh, eliminated as a part of uh, sanctions back in 2010. That has now been restored. Uh, so uh, if you uh, want to buy Iranian or import Iranian pistachios or, or, uh, or, or buy uh, good Persian carpets, uh, you can do so again uh, legally uh, in the United States. And then the United States agreed uh, to lift a prohibition on direct uh, U.S.-Iranian trade and investment in the aviation industry. So. Uh, air, uh, aviation companies are now free to sell uh, either uh, airplanes or aviation support products uh, to Iranian uh, entities, uh, which is a major uh, breakthrough in terms of uh, allowing a new category of trade uh, between uh, the United States uh, and Iran. So as I said, all of these uh, uh, took effect last uh, uh, Saturday, or on the first business day since, uh, since Saturday. Uh, some parts, it's a, it's a major change uh, in how I think the world and certainly the United States will be dealing with Iran. Some things do remain the same. Obviously, there are significant foreign policy differences between the Iranian government and the American government, uh, whether it uh, concerns the Middle East peace process or uh, regional stability, events in Syria. Of course, we have serious differences uh, with the Iranian government. We have concerns about Iran's. Uh, support for terrorist activities. Uh, we have concerns about the human rights situation in Iran, and there are different sanctions that remain in place uh, for uh, those uh, uh, those reasons. This nuclear deal was never supposed to be about those parts of the relationship. It was just about uh, reducing the threat to the potential nuclear Iran. <coughs> excuse me, and um, giving Iran the opportunity to demonstrate that its nuclear program is in fact. Uh, peaceful in a verifiable kind of way. So it's an important development in U.S.-Iranian relations. It's an important development, I, I think, in, uh, in non-proliferation, nuclear non-proliferation, and, and general regional security concerns that we think will make a positive difference. Uh, but the work is just beginning. Uh, we've reached this goal. I think we're going to be, as Orna mentioned, uh, working in, with my staff and others in the U.S. government going forward to make sure that both sides comply with the deal, that Iran keeps its commitments, uh, that we as a government keep our commitments together with our European partners, and, uh, and, and we'll keep working at it. But it's a good a good outcome. I think uh, Iran got something that was important for it. We got something that was important for us, and I hope we can build on it uh, going forward 
uh, to uh, improve uh, computer security, uh, in, particularly in that region.